Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Slipping Out. In this one, we'll be taking a look behind the scenes and out of bounds of Playdead's Inside, which of course means going outside of Inside to show you some curiosities, secrets and hidden Easter eggs you may never have seen before, including characters lurking in the background, also a closer look at the main characters, some mechanics of the game and out of bounds areas, and of course, the mysteries involved within the game, some of which have still yet to be solved. To start off with, I guess we need to see where the boy appears from, and he's clinging onto the side of this rock, hidden behind some of the branches and leaves. Then of course, once we start, he drops down. One detail I couldn't help but notice when I first started exploring inside was that the leaves at the beginning of the game are shaped as love hearts. I'm not sure if this was intentional, but they do look strikingly well shaped. And instantly, this brings us to another amazing detail and easter egg that is incredibly easy to miss. In fact, it's only because I was exploring with the camera that I found it, although it is visible from the normal view. Check it out. Hidden amongst the grass and the leaves, it is of course the boy from Playdead's other title, Limbo, which is also another great mysterious platformer, and if you do enjoy this type of genre, I'd definitely check that one out too. Now, if like me, you enjoy going out of bounds just to see what's outside the normal plane domains, and let's face it, if you're watching this video, then you probably are, then you may want to know what's beyond the start and behind the side-scrolling camera. Well, to be honest, at this point, there's not too much, although later in the video, I will be showing some strange instances of assets that go way further behind the camera than you'd ever think or see. So what about our main character? What does it look like close up? Well, it has no face, that's for sure. However, there could be a very good reason for that. For a long time, players have been coming up with theories about what exactly the game means. It is all a bit of a mystery. However, I like to think the developers' intentions were to insinuate that the game is in control of you, the player, rather than the other way around. Therefore, the boy is just a representation of yourself, whoever you may be, hence why it doesn't have a name or face. Throughout the game we see vehicles carting off hordes of people, or dummies as I've seen them called, but where do these vehicles come from and go to? If we follow this truck we can see it passes through a black texture in the background to where it then stops, and this is much the same with the other vehicles too, although some rather than staying at the back of the map simply disappear. Now that we know the vehicles disappear just out of bounds, it may come as no surprise that so too do the character models, so I'm not going to show too much more of this happening, as it's practically the same throughout, but here's a quick example where the being seems to fall through the map first. And this is the same with the people that we see in the background being marched through the city. However, there are some mysterious characters in the backgrounds that we can find walking around on set pathways, sometimes even behind the visible areas. Did you ever wonder where the vicious dog comes from that chases you across the river? Well, it can be found hiding amongst the terrain. You can just about see its teeth showing here. And as we never see it, I always wondered where it went after it runs off. What the? Is it... is it drowning? A cool little behind the scenes moment of how the game is working just out of shot can be found when being chased. From this zoomed out view you can see how the actor speeds up and slows down to allow time for the player to get away. Earlier in the video I mentioned that there wasn't a lot to see behind the normal camera position, however there are a couple of exceptions. 
during the subway section, for some strange reason, if we go backwards, we can find that the tracks run way behind where you may think. I wonder if at some point there could have been a carriage that was moving along these tracks that the player had to dodge. Also, some of the water sections have a huge amount of water leaning away from the playable areas. So far out, in fact, that the main map almost disappears out of the draw distance. Whilst on the rooftops of the city, I thought it would be a good time to show how large sectors of the map look. Surprisingly, there is quite a lot of it loaded up in certain places, outside of the normal shot, even parts that we can never return to. Something I did find that maybe you guys who have worked on Unity Engine can help me out with are these hidden cubes above the building with these masked onlookers. At first I thought these red, green and black coloured cubes could be used for dealing with certain functions within the map or maybe even holding assets before they spawn. However, I then noticed later in the game the long herd creature who chases us in the water has the same coloured tubes coming off it, which got me a bit perplexed. There were only these two instances I could find of this, so let me know in the comments if you know why this would be. Some more awesome little easter eggs now that you may have missed before we move on to the mysteries still surrounding the game. Did you know that if you climb on this cabinet three times a handheld games machine will fall out? Also by launching the submarine into these lockers we can find a model of what's known as the huddle. If you do decide to hang around long enough before dropping through this opening hatch, the workers in the background pull out a large mechanical robot, which will then scan around and eventually find you, before giving you the shock of your life. However, what you may never have seen, because it can only actually happen when you do drop through the hatch, is that when you do, the robot gets sad and seems to, well, shut itself down. Oh. If like me you wondered what was at the top of the beams of light that shock us, then here it is. Now I'm not entirely sure what that is exactly at the top of the coil, however it looks as though the developers made it look as though a hatch opens, although it's very difficult to see even with the footage slowed way down. Let me know in the comments what you think it may be. Another curiosity I had was where does the submarine first appear from? I thought I'd find it already in position in the depths of the water, but it turns out it's hidden under the pier before spawning into position. This scene is also home to another easter egg that's particularly difficult to see. Here is a mug with a recognisable face on it. Other mugs like this can be found throughout the levels, but some are just as difficult to spot. Alright guys, we're going to touch on some of the bigger mysteries surrounding Inside and at this point I'd like to shout out a good YouTube friend of mine, Odd Header, who covered Inside in one of his videos which I'll leave a link to in the description which is definitely worth checking out as it goes into much more detail than I will. However, it all started with these windows that can be found in the labs and players very early on realised that some of these had numbered ciphers and other curious texts on them. Some of these got worked out pretty quickly, whilst others still remain a mystery to this day. One of the more mysterious things about these ciphers is that one was spotted during the preview trailer for the game back in 2014. However, after the game's release, it had then disappeared. Yet the code that players think featured on that window is still hidden in the game. In fact, it can be found on the number 7 window as the huddle falls through the floor, although it's impossible to see normally. 
Whilst we're in this room, I thought I'd also point out these objects, which, other than the screwdriver of course, I'm not entirely sure what they represent. There are some other mysteries too, such as the printer which seems to print off different lines of code, depending on what console you play on, which to this day I still believe the PS4 and the PC versions are unsolved. The mystery got even deeper, however, when a printer button appeared on Playdead's website, however this and its function, involved with solving the puzzles, have now been removed, meaning unfortunately these mysteries may remain unsolved forever. Thank you to YouTube membership holder Storm who got in touch via Twitter, asking to get a closer look at the long herd creatures. Now most of the time these things have no facial features, just like our protagonist the boy. However later on during one scene, one of them seems to have more features than the rest. Pretty creepy if you ask me. Another possible easter egg which I haven't seen documented, but I could have sworn I've come across these scientist models in a slipping out episode before. Hmm. Fascinating. I never suspected such things could be. And I guess it wouldn't be a slipping out episode without finding a character in the classic T-pose. Just out of curiosity, when does the cage reappear? Ah, right. Twitter follower Bagels wanted to know how much longer the shockwave lasts after we go past it. Well, from what I can tell, the shockwave blast that we see go past us stops just after we enter the blast door. However, the lighting effects keep going until we enter the lift. I should point out that there is nothing I could find out there of any interest. One thing I like to know about games is if the clocks on the walls run in real time, and I'm pleased to say Inside is one of them. So yes, it really was 1646 when I was recording this footage, and by changing the internal clock on the PC or console, whichever you're playing on, you can change the time on the clocks in the game. A nice little detail, and it certainly adds to the immersion. So we are getting closer and closer to the end, but one thing I really wanted to know at this point was if the huddle was inside the chamber whilst all the scientists peered in. I didn't exactly expect it to be, but I was surprised that the rest of the interior machinery could be found. I guess before the end we should take a closer look at the huddle. Now without seeing it you may not realise that the back is just a texture that expands and contracts with the movement. In fact from this angle you can sometimes see right through it. So there we go, that is it for this episode of Slipping Out. There is nothing much to show out in the ocean other than for some bizarre reason a tree branch under the water. I have no idea why that would be here, but then again this game is a bit of an enigma in itself. Anyway, if you feel you have any curiosities you wanted to see that maybe I didn't include, join me on one of the social media sites in the description and I will do my best to show it for you. Thanks again, and as always, Take care.